Hallelujah. Christ is risen. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ. And we are a new creation for this saving mystery and for this water. Let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. And in the waters, you flood us with mercy and your sin is our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm the troubled places, <coughs> the troubled waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst. Cleanse our hearts. Wipe away every tear. To you our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb. Be honor and glory, praise and thanksgiving, now and forever. We join now in our first hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is risen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Bountiful God, you gather your people into your realm and you promise us food from the tree of life. Nourish us with your word that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world you have made. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay. And, um, and I'm pausing here to see if we have our reader. Okay. Our first reading is from the 16th chapter of Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Semithrace and the following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city in the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for, for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who had gathered there, a certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God who was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatria and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Word of God, word of life. Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. Our second reading is from the 21st chapter of Revelation. And in the spirit, one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth shall bring their glory into it. 
its gates will never be shut by day and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and honor of the nation, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God in the land. Through the middle of the street of the city, on either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nation. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will no more, there will be no more night. They need no light or lamp or sun. For the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered Judas, not Iscariot. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not <clears throat> keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. For those who are following, I am going to look again or continue to look at Acts. Um, so if you want that in front of you, <clears throat> feel free. So Paul has this vision. Right, come to Macedonia. We need you. So let's start with two points here. Firstly, hearing God speak to them in in a way that wasn't odd for them. It, it perhaps seems very strange to us. It isn't kind of how we kind of function. It, it is tougher, <coughs> excuse me, for, for us to have this spiritual connection with God speaking to us as clearly as, as many in, in um, Old Testament or even in Jesus' day understood. Right? So this wasn't all. It, it, 
to, to go to understanding some of this, we just need to kind of go through Old Testament where we have many, many, many times where God spoke to them in dreams and in visions and, and things of that nature, all right? So that's first thing. <coughs> Second point is Macedonia, from where they are, wasn't a short distance away. They didn't have an SUV, right? They weren't just trucking up there. It, I, it, it, it's, hard, it's hard to exactly give you a sense, but if you will, it wasn't, obviously, it wasn't as if it wasn't doable, right? If, if we had a map, we could lay it out because they pretty much laid it out in the text, right? But it, it would be like, okay, we're going to hop in the car and go to Disney World and we're going to do this um, in, in 24 hours straight, right? It was doable, but it was a trick, okay? So God has this vision. He's got to get a bunch of people organized around him. And it's not like he was heading over to Lehigh Valley Hospital in Allentown. Right? So, so under, understand all that as, as, as a back way. Okay. Now, look at verse 10 or hear verse 10 again. Being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. God had called us. There it is. If you've ever been in our house, you know that Alexa controls an awful lot of things. Being, being married to a computer programmer, David figures all these things out. <laughs> it just spoke back to me. Uh, <laughs> lights, morning alarms, heat, whatever else, Alexa. I don't even, I can't even list it all to you. And it's all about convenience, isn't it? Think about, uh, and now I'm, I'm going back. Not all of us remember this, but <laughs> think about stores. How, how they went, you went to the butcher store for your meat. Right? That's where you went. Right? <clears throat> and, and, and how that has changed to the corner store and the grocery market. And now, and now that's kind of a superstore. Right? And, and, and really, you can just do it all online these days, right? All about convenience. But Paul shows the point here that it isn't about convenience. He, there's nothing convenient about what Paul does. Thing is, where, where are my Bible study people? Do we remember Lydia, right? The, the, the impact that this trip had on Christianity was huge, was huge. Lydia, it states in there, she, she sold purple cloth. Basically, that's a little hint to say she had means. She had houses in different cities, including probably Rome, where she ended up hosting Christian congregations. And that's what they were in those days. 
They called them house churches. They certainly weren't buildings aside. That never would have been allowed. And she hosted all of that. She was so key into the early growth of what we now know as Christianity. And there are, there are people that would disagree with me, but here's a nihilism. I even think it was probably Lydia that penned the book Hebrews in our Bible. And that would be the only book that would have had a female kind of authorship. This trip was huge that we're seeing here and and that's why it's kind of listed inconvenience the inconvenience of the gospel right Christianity is all about inconvenience, isn't it? Think about the, the, the convenience of Christianity. Well, gee, we can just do this. We would better sleep on Sunday mornings. We can hang on to what we give for offering and go out to eat, not be a part of a committee, let somebody else take care of talking to somebody about their faith. That's all about convenience, right? And if we do all that, well, then what happens to Christianity? <laughs> Paul reminds us of how inconvenient what we do is. It just, it just isn't always an easy thing. But how important it is. Think about St. Andrews. Now, this is a story I have heard ever since I got here, right? Sunday school in the chicken coop, right? There's, there's an inconvenient story. It's never told that way, but it was, boy. That place had to be, it was a chicken coop. It really had to be cleaned up and readied a lot. I'm not saying there were still chickens in there, but, but it, was, it was a dirty building. That's what it was for, right? So, so people came together every week, carted their own vacuum cleaners. I've been told these stories. <laughs> and got that place ready to go on a Sunday morning so it could be used for a Sunday school that was grown. Right? That, that was the 60s. It's now the 2020s. Believe that one or not, but it is. Right? It's now the 2020s. What is our chicken coop of the 2020s? Right? Where are we? What is, what, what is our inconvenience, if, if you will? One of the, the toughest things here is something we're not used to doing, I kind of started out with, but is to do exactly what Paul did to start with. Hear and listen to God's call. I can't guarantee it, but, but it is certainly likely that God's call isn't going to be convenient. It's going to mean challenge for us. But we've got to identify that call and we've got to embrace it 
with all that we're worth. Because that's the key. That's, that, that's how we grab the next chicken coop. Imagine if Paul would have sat back and said, nah, I'm not going up to Macedonia. The powerful negative effect that would have had on the earliest church. But he went. But he went. By God's call. Where is our chicken coop? What Macedonia is God calling us to? Amen. join in confessing our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. set free from captivity to sin and death. We pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. 
surround us with your peace. God, in your mercy, shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. God, in your mercy, give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, or peace, especially those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. God, in your mercy. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather us with those who have died especially those we now name silently or in our hearts. When we meet together at your river of life, God in your mercy, we pray for <clears throat> Luther Manor of Bethlehem and the Reverend Clark Kuntz. God, in your mercy, healing God, help us as we find our way through COVID-19. Remind us that the vaccine is a gift from you, helping us to be loving and accepting of all as we seek a graceful way through the pandemic. God, in your mercy, Peaceful God, we pray for an end to the conflict in the Ukraine. Help those in charge value human life and find peaceful ways of solving their conflict. Protect and comfort those who are suffering because of this war. God, in your mercy. And Heavenly God, as the nursery school comes to an end this year. We pray that you have blessed the children this past year, that you would be with them over the summer and that you would bring them back to us full of energy and, and aliveness. Heavenly God, we are thankful for, for the teachers, for those who lead and guide Dear God, continue to bless and be with them. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of God's peace, one with another.
let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings as you has, have raised us to new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This is the peace we speak. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people, Israel, from the bonds of slavery and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. To him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. <clears throat> now hopefully you have your bread and your wine ready.
the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you sent light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. In Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. 